Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to a new edition of a boot camp session. Uh, this webinar is titled How to Use Crowdfunding Platforms. And for that, today we have a great speaker. His name is Adrian Reed. I will tell you about him a little bit more uh, just in, uh, in a second. Uh, before we begin, I do want to um, tell you a little bit about the, the, the recording. We're going to record this session. And of course, after we record it, it will be uploaded to the bootcamp uh, webpage in which you can review it, and uh, you can um, also go through uh, the the whole video and go through the presentation that uh, Mr. Adrian Reed will do today. Uh, so for that, you only need to go to uh, www.yabt.net/bootcamp. And you will be able to find. If not, just go straight to the bootcamp. Uh, sorry, to the YABT webpage, which is yabt.net, and you will find the links there to get to the bootcamp platform. So, I would like to begin this webinar by talking a little bit about today's speaker, Adrian Reed. He's a he's a serial entrepreneur and founder of Legacy Global. He also co-founded Vision Funder, which is a crowdfunding platform itself, uh, which is the topic of today's webinar. He's a seasoned business professional with over 15 years of management consultancy, strategic marketing, and business development experience. Uh, he holds an MBA with a concentration in entrepreneurship and strategic marketing from the University of Zuri. Adrian has also worked with several companies in the Caribbean, the United States, and West Africa, conducting workshops and providing consultancy and advisory services to facilitate business growth. Adrian is a member of the mentorship pillar of the Barbados Entrepreneurship Foundation and is, a pa and is passionate about spreading a love for business and, a developing the, and developing the next generation of business professionals. In 2010, he was awarded the position as business specialist at Apple uh, to strengthen the business development and marketing of their new strategic business unit by identifying opportunities for growth and expansion in the North American market. Uh, this was a multi-million dollar market, uh, which he grew by 150% uh, in over a year. Up until 2009, Adrian managed his own consultancy, consultancy firm, where he focused heavily on the SME sector, training over 1,000 entrepreneurs and business professionals in the areas of human resource management, marketing, strategic planning, performance management, supervisory management, and general business management. Uh, for the past three years, Adrian has worked extensively in the service sector in Barbados with a focus on improving a global competitiveness of the creative industry and also the ICT uh, sector. Currently, Adrian works on identifying socioeconomic problems in the Caribbean, Latin America, and West Africa and building business models to address those problems at Legacy Global, a company he founded. Uh, also, a uh, vision founder is one of those business models he developed to address the challenge of access to affordable and appropriate finance and market for the Caribbean people. So that being said, um, I'm going to share my screen with you and we can begin the presentation. Adrian, if you can hear me, um, I will unmute your microphone right now. And I would like to thank everyone who is present and remind you once again that the session will be recorded in order to, for you to access and review later. Uh, also, we will have a short Q&A uh, session uh, towards the end of the presentation that will be led by Mr. Reed. So without further ado, uh, Mr. Reed, you have uh, the open mic. Fantastic, thanks for that. Um, yeah, it's really a pleasure um, to be invited to um, speak to you guys on the whole topic of um, crowdfunding and to finance and raising um, money for your business. Um, I wouldn't go much into who I am, I think, um, who did a, a great job of that. So let's kind of can jump right in. So a little bit about um, Vision Funder. Um, and that will take us into the whole topic of crowdfunding, um, seeing that Vision Fund, of course, is um, the one of the region's um, first crowdfunding um, portals. Um, Jose, I'm getting a little of getting a little delay on the changing of the slides. Um, not quite sure why that is. Uh, we have right now the one I have on my screen is the one with the picture of you. You want me to go to the next one? 
Um, yeah, I'm saying that, but it's still I'm kind of linking into the first slide as well, merging the two together. So I'm not quite sure. Okay, yeah, so it's finally, yeah, so it's really about, yeah, that did it. So yeah, so I wouldn't go too much into myself, like you said. Um, um, I think um, they did a really good job of kind of sum uh, summarizing um, my background for the last um, 15 years. So let's kind of talk a little bit about Vision Funder um, in particular and um, why we really did this. So Vision Funder is a crowdfunding platform really designed to allow um, Caribbean entrepreneurs to, to, to raise money for the ideas, their projects, their businesses, and social causes. Um, I've been working, like I said, with entrepreneurs for quite a while, and one of the most, for me, frustrating things I've, I've seen is people having great ideas and great passion, um, you know, things that can really change the way we live and do things, but just having great difficulty finding the capital to bring those ideas to life. And for me personally, that really um, was a sore, a sore spot of frustration for me. And I'm the type of person that, um, if, I'm if I'm frustrated, I'm not going to go on a talk show and, and complain. I'm going to build a business see if I can solve the problem. And that's kind of why, you know, we did um, Vision Funders. So, I mean, I ask entrepreneurs all the time, how easy is it, you know, for you to get money from, say, a bank, for example, um, for your idea? And a lot of people have great difficulty, you know, for a whole host of reasons. I mean, you know, it could be the issue of collateral, you know, it could be um, they don't qualify for the amount they want. And and the reality is that um, banks in themselves are not really geared towards funding startups. Um, and so it's not, I'm not saying anything bad against banks, but I just understand they're set up not really to really finance startups. They're really there to secure your, your deposits and um, to make sure that when you go to the ATM, and you put your card in there, you get back your money. You know, so if they began to really invest heavily in startups and stuff, you don't want a case where you go to the bank on a Friday to uh, buy some groceries and you realize, you know, money is not there because they lost the investment. So you need to understand different vehicles have different roles and different purposes. And banks are not really set up um, that way to really um, be really powerful vehicles for early entrepreneurial startup. Um, I want you to kind of pay attention to this slide. So this is this really um, caught my attention when I saw it. So this is looking at um, two things: looking at the whole issue of crowdfunding globally. So the circles that are purple, that that's looking at how much money entrepreneurs would have raised in certain parts of the world using crowdfunding, and the blue circles are looking at the rate of growth that crowdfunding has had year on year from the so for the last year it's been growing by that percentage you're seeing in the blue um, circle. So for example, in North America you're seeing you know entrepreneurs would have raised 9.46 billion. Um, you know in Europe they're they're raising like 3.26 billion, coming down to more developing countries um, like us, Africa doing 12 million, South America doing 57 sorry 0.2 million. But let me ask a question. Do you see any purple circles by the Caribbean? You know, I know you can't answer it, you can't hear it, but no, there are no purple circles by the Caribbean because there has been no funding, crowdfunding wise, happening in that sector. So my question I ask are entrepreneurs in the, in the Caribbean any different from entrepreneurs anywhere else in the world? Of course not. So why haven't we been doing um, raising 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 money? Um, via crowdfunding? Well, there's two reasons. One, there was no really dedicated um, portal for the Caribbean. And secondly, there was no one doing training um, on crowdfunding really in the region. And really, that's why Vision Funder really came about to kind of answer those two um, missing gaps where we want to offer an actual crowdfunding portal dedicated to the Caribbean and to Caribbean projects and Caribbean ideas. And of course, the whole issue of offering training um, to entrepreneurs, kind of like what we're doing today. So let's kind of look at crowdfunding and the four main types of crowdfunding that they have. So there is the donor model, the equity model, the lending model, and the reward model. So donor model is kind of like where um, people would give money to a entrepreneur, to a project, and there is nothing um, expected in return from the entrepreneur or from the NGO or from the person who is raising money, um, it's a donation, um, as simple as that. And the crowdfunding portal really facilitates the donation of monies to those projects. 
um, equity model, as the name suggests, is a bit different where um, it's still called funding, but in return for the financial investment, the entrepreneur has to give up um, some measure of equity um, in their business, and you can appreciate that is a bit more involved than, say, a donation model. Um, just to say, too, that in the Caribbean, um, our current infrastructure legally doesn't really allow or facilitate for equity for, um, or funding at this stage of the game, but we're working towards that. Um, lending model, again, the name is really self-explanatory. It's where the people become your bank. So you're an entrepreneur, you want to raise $5,000, you know, a stock capital for your idea, for your business, and people would give, you know, uh, 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 certain amounts of money, you know, in donations that you set out um, for your business, and you in return pay them back at a rate of interest um, over a period of time that is, of course, less than what you would normally have to pay in interest if the bank was lending you that money. And the last but not least, the reward model, which is the one that we um, um, are doing in the uh, Caribbean through Vision Funder, and the one that globally is really having some significant impact for entrepreneurs raising money. And how that works is simply this. So an entrepreneur, again, has an idea, has a business. They put their crowdfunding um, campaign, their idea, on the portal. And in return for um, monies given to the company, you as an entrepreneur would offer that person various rewards. Let me go into detail what those rewards can be. Um, so those are the four um, main um, categories of crowdfunding. There are a few more, but those four really make up the um, the crux of what crowdfunding um, is constructed of now um, in, by 2016. So in terms of, um, you know, Crowdfunding, there are two, I would say, um, de facto um, crowdfunding portals right now globally. So one would be um, Kickstarter, which many of you may be aware of, and that is based in US. And um, you know, and they're awesome, awesome um, site doing you know, great things. Um, the challenge is though, f for them to really play on their platform, you have to have either an American um, address, American bank account, and you know that's kind of limiting for the region. So some people from the region may have those things, but many won't. So if um, a, a solution only can cater to a small percentage of the region, for me, it's not really an answer, you know, to um, the Caribbean. So we wanted to bring a, a portal that is really dedicated to the Caribbean, for the Caribbean, by the Caribbean, and um, for Caribbean um, projects. So we're gonna have a little a bit of dictionary now. Um, just a vocabulary of you know different players in the crowdfunding um, cycle. So you have your project creator, who is the entrepreneur who would actually create a project. Um, then you have your rainmaker, who is a person who would pledge money to a project. And make it rain is the term used when someone actually would give money to a project. I'll kind of let um, Jose show you a little um, video. Um, hopefully it shows well. Um, on the vision funding model for how fitting for the region. So let's see if this works as it should. <laughs> Are you hearing any sound? I don't think we have any sound. So you have a great idea for a song, movie, novel, or maybe it's a video game, fashion project, a kill that, or some new invention that will change the world, and you know it will be great. But most of the time, you need one main ingredient to get off the ground. Money. Exactly. Just like you have to have money to do anything, you have to have money to do anything. Because they think the risk is too great. So many ideas die in early death. But what if you could quickly and securely raise and receive the money you needed for your project online from friends, family, and other creative people from all over the world that believe in your project? What if you could then reward all these people?
Join us to unleash Caribbean creativity to the world. Vision Fund. Creative people. Creative fun. Yeah, I think we had a bit of um, some scratchiness on on that video, so my apologies for for that. Um, but yeah, that just basically kind of sums up and shows in a summary way, you know, how Vision Funder uses crowdfunding for the region, and we'll kind of get into some of the meat of the matter of how we actually will create um, crowdfunding campaigns and build them effectively that we can attract finance um, for our companies. Yeah. So, for me, um, when I'm looking at definitions, I like to start off with what things are not to set a framework so we can understand um, what things actually are. So, first off, crowdfunding is not a get-rich-quick scheme. Um, I personally have no stomach for or time for such things. Nobody invests my time or money um, and anything of the sort. So, it's not a matter where you come on, you just get rich and it doesn't work that way. There's a lot of work that goes into um, building a successful campaign, and we'll look at those steps um, shortly. Um, secondly, it's not a pyramid scheme where, you know, um, yeah, I won't go into details of that. It's not a pyramid scheme. I think we all know what those are and how those work. And probably last but not least, um, it's really not for the lazy. Um, it's not a case where you can just go on, you know, you do a few things and you sit back and you watch money roll and it doesn't work that way. You really do have to put in a great deal of work um, and effort to build a, a really um, successful and e efficient um, and effective crowdfunding um, campaign. So what is crowdfunding? So we saw what it's not. So what is it? It's the art of raising money for a project or a venture by collecting small monetary contributions from a large number of people um, and mainly um, through um, the internet. And I say mainly and you'll see why I say mainly in a bit. So normally, when we're doing um, crowdfunding um, campaigns in the region, it normally takes two days for us to go through all the nuts and bolts of building a campaign. Of course, we don't have two days um, online. Um, and of course, I wouldn't mind spending have just um, on an hour or so. So we're gonna have to condense all the information um, in a it's a sync where you can kind of have tidbits to take away and action as soon as you finish um, listening to this. Um, webinar. So how we're going to do this is we're going to condense all that information into three main um, topic areas. So we're looking at the storytelling, we'll look at the social network, and we'll look at the um, reward um, system and how those three um, come together to really um, build your campaign. So I want to start off a little bit looking at the history of crowdfunding. Um, I personally found this story um, extremely interesting. So many of you would know what that icon is, is the Statue of Liberty. Uh, what you may not know is that this was really a gift um, from France um, in 1885 given to the US um, to kind of build a relationship between the two countries. And France's responsibility was they were going to build and craft the statue and the America, and America's responsibility was to build a pedestal that would actually um, hoist up the statue. And so the American they build, it had a committee um, come together to raise that money, and they call it the American Committee um, for the Statue of Liberty. I know it's not a very creative name, but <laughs> that's what it came up with in 1885. And their job was to raise enough money to build a pedestal made of marble that it can granite, sorry, that can hold up the weight of such an immense statue. And they were successful to some degree, but they only were able to raise like quarter, uh, like two thirds of that money, and uh, which was like um, quarter million, and in our time like 6.3 million, and they were out by a third um, to really get this pedestal up and running. And they went to persons, they asked the, the government, um, government said they had no money, you know. So they and so other states came in and said, well, I'll lend you the money, but if we do. It has to be in our state. So, you know, if they um, had the money from other states, when we fly into the U.S., you know, on JetBlue or whatever, we wouldn't have seen the Statue of Liberty there on Staten Island. So, um, a guy called Joseph Pulster, I think you would know the last name, but it puts a word. He was the editor of a newspaper at that point in time called The World. And what he did was essentially he ran a front page crowdfunding campaign for five months. And he, and he did this. He said this. 
that America, we need to get together, you know, New York, sorry, and rally together, put our funds together to build this pedestal, you know, it's a symbol of liberty and all that good stuff, and it said if you give one dollar, you'll get a little miniature version of that Statue of Liberty, if you give five dollars, you'll get an, a version plus some other perks, so he basically was rewarding people for giving small monetary donations, and he ran this um, campaign for five months, and he was able to raise a hundred and one thousand dollars um, from 160 persons, and basically he surpassed the one-third um, limit that they were trying to raise, and most people gave less than a dollar, and people gave from all walks of life, so business people, children, housewives, I mean, he was able to really amass a lot of, um, of money by running this crowdfunding campaign, so I started here to kind of say crowdfunding is not a new thing. Um, it's as old as 1885, it's as old as um, the Statue of Liberty, but the difference between him and us is this, he had to do that via his newspaper, so it's only focused on New York. We had the internet. We can use the same principles he used, but the whole world is our oyster. That's what makes crowdfunding so powerful, so exciting to me, and why we're really excited about kind of bringing this technology and this uh, way of raising funds to the Caribbean. And um, it's kind of come a bit um, in back to our day, present day. And this is a, um, a school in Grenada, and they actually ran a crowdfunding campaign um, to make their project that they were doing um, sustainable, and they were able to raise um, six hundred six sorry sixty three thousand one hundred and sixty dollars to help bring their campaign to life. And the reason why I show this one is because now we say we know. Um, how funny is work is a good idea, but it's really work. It really works for the um, developed world. It works in America. It works here. And we can have the idea. It doesn't work um, in the region. But I'm saying that someone from Grenada, one of our smaller islands, um, so Grenada is only like 133 square miles or, or thereabout, and they were able to amass 63 thousand dollars for their project. So I'm saying that our funding it's it's a doable um, proposition to raise money for your business in the Caribbean. Another successful um, Caribbean campaign that I'm aware of, I know the guy personally, um, this is a guy called John Hunt, and he's a dancer, and he and another partner um, got together, and they um, wanted to get raise money to do a dance project, uh, a, a dance show, and they were able to raise um, 15,000 US, um, I think they did it twice, you know, so I'm just saying that this thing works, and Caribbean people are understanding the power of crowdfunding, they're trying to find a technology to use it um, to really um, attract capital and seed funding for their projects, for their businesses, and for their social causes. Um, there is one more I'll, I'll show you, this is a smaller one that, um, that was done as well too, as an author. Um, this one was done actually on Vision Funder itself. They wanted to raise a small amount of money um, to do some marketing and um, also do some production for their book. And they were able to raise um, a small amount of money to get that done. So crowdfunding can be used to raise large amounts of money or it can be used to raise... The issue is all, all about how you want to use it, what you want to use it for, but the technology works. Um, the principle works, and it's really our time to really be building our businesses, not waiting on a loan from a bank, or et cetera, but really using the power of social media to gather um, a crowd, gather momentum, and really fund what we're doing. So let's kind of um, dig in a little bit to this. So oh, before I go, this last one I want to show. Um, I thought it's important for you to show this. So this guy, he wanted to raise, um, I think, six thousand dollars. He only was able to raise eleven hundred and six, and he only got like eleven backers. So probably him himself, his mom and his girlfriend, probably. And um, you know, I thought it's important for you to show this because what I don't want to give the impression of is that every single crowdfunding campaign works. That's just not the truth. So um, some do fail. And in fact, I will go on for I will go further and say that a lot actually do fail. And a lot of them fail because, I mean, for a few reasons. So one, it may be the product or the idea or the business just might not be a good one. You know, I know as entrepreneurs um, and your managers, sometimes we, we don't want to hear that, but the reality is sometimes the idea is not really good. Um, you know, and 43% of campaigns are the ones that make their, their target, makes their goal. But more often than not, the reason why campaigns fail is because I have no pre-launch strategy. In other words, what they do is they decide on Monday 
I want to do a crowdfunding campaign. Tuesday, they go on the crowdfunding portals like Vision Funder, do up the campaign, and by Wednesday, expect money to come rolling in. There's a, work, there's a lot of work has to go in long before you actually decide to launch the campaign. So a lot of campaigns fail because there's no pre-launch strategy, and we'll talk a little bit about that as we as we go through our slide deck. So I thought it was important for me to make sure we understand that failure is a possibility, but we want to mitigate um, our failure by do, doing two things. One, having a good project, a good idea, and then having a launch, a pre-launch strategy um, to really market our um, campaign before we make it live in public. So let's kind of dive into how we go about doing this. So the first thing I want to say is you should not do crowdfunding alone. You want to build a team, yeah? And 80% of the campaigns that are successful have teams that work together, leveraging different strengths of the person in the team. Now, I have a list of here of not of team members, but of functions that your team should be having within itself. So your team could be a team of three, it could be a team of four, you know, team of five if you want to, um, minimum minimum two. But these are the kind of things you want to be, these skill sets you want to be coming out in your campaign. So one, you must have the visionary. And normally that is the entrepreneur or the NGO leader who has the idea, who has the vision, who wants to kind of drive this forward, you know, that is not the person who is the visionary. But then you have what they call the task enforcer. <laughs> now that person is the person who has this innate ability to take big dreams, big ideas, and break it down into actionable steps. You know, um, how do we actually make this dream uh, come to reality? How do we, what do we have to do today tomorrow, the next day, to actually reach the destination. And, you know, that's kind of like my wife and, you know, and my, 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 my business. You know, I'm the guy with the vision, I can see what we want to do, and she's the one that says, fantastic, now come down to earth, let's see the steps we've got to take to make this happen. And you need someone like that in your team to kind of break vision into actionable steps. Next, you want to have someone who is pretty good with research. Um, there is some measure of research that has to go on in building your campaign, and you want somebody who is comfortable um, with Google, comfortable searching the internet for past campaigns, getting an idea of what people were doing in the past, you can build um, best practices into your particular campaign. You want to have someone who has some amount of social media savvy. Now when I say that, I don't mean your 14 year old niece or nephew that does a duck face um, on Instagram and posts that had you know conflicts for, for, um, for, for breakfast. I mean someone who understands how to use Twitter, how to use Facebook, how to boost the ad, you know, how to use hashtags, someone who has some measure of understanding of how to use those networks, which network is best used for what. Like, for example, if I was trying to target women, um, I would lean towards Twitter and lean towards Pinterest, you know, for example. If I'm, I'm targeting um, eight, um, 18 and under, I'm using Snapchat, for example. So understanding your networks, understanding those platforms, which one works best to, to approach this person. Um, you also want to have someone I call a utility. Um, in the team, and that's someone who, who has just extra pair of um, eyes, extra pair of hands, they just help you to get stuff done. Um, you know, virtual assistants, um, I always say, are very, very good. Um, you know, you can check out Elance or Zirtual, and basically what these are, these are, are, are platforms where you can find people who would do a task for you um, for a particular um, fee. Um, they don't become your permanent staff, so there's no NAS or a site to pay them. It's a simple um, transaction where they do a, a job for you and you pay them for that transaction and the costs are normally um, very reasonable. So it's a great way as entrepreneurs um, to kind of scale your business up and down, you know, for your, your business and the general level for your campaign if you want to have the extra resources is also a good way to get extra hand as well. And last but not least, get your friends involved. You know, the crowd, um, you know, is mobilized by people and friends are awesome because they're normally free and they love you and they help you get your stuff off the ground. So utilize your friends, you know, get some, some, some pizza over, get some beer over, or if you don't drink alcohol, get a, a, a box juice over and just kind of plan, brainstorm, and make it a fun activity, yeah? So those are some of the things you kind of want to bear in mind when you're building your, your, you're building your campaign. Um, so beyond you building your team now, you know, you also want to have an idea of your story because your story is what people buy into. You know, people buy into 
um, what you're saying about yourself, what you're saying about your product. So you need to be able to really understand this. And one of the things I have realized with many entrepreneurs is that they think of their product as the star and their customer as the cold star. So in other words, they look at their product from the standpoint of, you know, my product is this, my product is that, as, a, as opposed to what can this do for my customer? Does my customer find it valuable? And if so, what value do, do they derive from my product or from my service? Because if, if you're raising capital to raise, you know, uh, money for your business, doing a crowdfunding campaign, you must be able to articulate what's in it for them. People are not going to give money because you know they you know they have money to give. They're going to give money because they can see the value in what you are actually you're actually creating or building or doing, and you're trying to fund via your crowdfunding campaign. So your customer, your target audience, is the star of the movie. You want to find out what they want, what they like, you know, and your product is the supporting cast, the supporting actor. So you need to be able to articulate very clearly what is the value that your product or service offers, but it must be defined from the viewpoint or from the lens of your customer. So, for example, what pain does it solve for them? What pleasure does it give them? I'll give you a, a good example of this. Many of you would know segways, you know. Um, the guy, um, um, Dean, who actually invented the segway, when he did it, he thought he was making the most awesome thing on the planet. You know, he was thinking, you know, it's a great vehicle, you know, it's energy efficient, it's green, and all of that. He thought that he would be making at least 10 grand in sales every single week when he started. That couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, people didn't like it. And the only re and so he made a great product, but it wasn't a solution, it wasn't a solution to anyone's problem. So he took a long time. It took a couple of years for people to actually find applications for the segue. So he thought his product was good, and it was, but from the, the viewpoint of the actual customer, they didn't see any value in it. So therefore, they did not buy it. So what does it mean for you? you benefits for the star and not go on harping only about how great you're supporting actor is. And a great way of kind of doing that, you know, is again, answers a few questions about your business, about your ideas. So for example, you know, um, what do you believe your customers need to be? You know, um, how can you actually go about solving, you know, those needs? Um, who will your initial, initial customers be for your idea? You know, what is the number one value a customer wants to get out of your service? Is it speed? Is it convenience? Is it safety? Is it, you know, security? You know, you need to be able to articulate what those things are. And secondly, what are the additional benefits that they'll get from your business, from your idea, um, from your service, you know? So these are a few of the questions that you should kind of go through in your mind to be able to, to, be able to answer the question, what will my customer get out of my business, my solution, my product? Because when I'm raising money via crowdfunding, I need to be able to articulate very clearly in a three minute video what those benefits are to them, what that value is to them, you know? So very, very important um, in terms of being able to powerfully communicate um, your value proposition to the audience. So this is a, a good example of a crowdfunding campaign that was run um, sometime back. Um, this product is called Duet, and what it is is a Bluetooth smart tag. So see how he ab he's able to very succinctly um, extract the value for the customer. So one, it gives the customer peace of mind for their phones feature. By watching out for the phone, it prevents people from losing their phones before it's, um, um, it gets lost. You know, and what's the benefits? You know, you never lose your phone again, never lose your valuables. You know, it's versatile. So he's able to very um, quickly communicate the value for his campaign, and you need to be able to do um, the same. And you do that by asking yourself the questions um, that they have before, kind of what's in it for your customer. 
Now we're going to go still in the issue of storytelling, and your story should have a few things in it. So you want to use videos, you want to use pictures, then you have to have, of course, your text, your copy, your pitch, for example, telling uh, about yourself, about your company, about what you're doing, about the value. You want to have your campaign goals, which is how much money you're trying to raise um, in your campaign, and of course, your rewards. In other words, what are you going to give people in exchange for the money that they give you? So these. Um, four things make up the crux of what your storytelling will be um, for your um, campaign. So we're reading, yeah, great. So in your video, a few things you want to kind of bear in mind. So one, you know, we say if a picture speaks a thousand words, well, I say a video speaks a million. It's a really great way to kind of engage your audience tell your story, build trust very quickly, communicate succinctly. Um, videos um, are very powerful and I would say most of all campaigns that are successful have some form of video um, attached to them. Um, so you know I don't need a million dollars to do you know a great video. You know the ways that you know you can do awesome video and not have to kind of do um, spend an arm um, and a leg um, in that, and I personally know some great videographers, you know, um, that I work with that I can recommend to you, um, you know, to get some really good stuff done and still have it done um, affordably, not breaking the bank. Um, since our last video didn't didn't show that well, I'm gonna skip um, this video. But basically, this is the video to the project that you've seen before, where they actually wanted to raise fifty-five um, thousand, but they raised. 63. So let's kind of jump into some thinking to bear in mind. So one, you want to tell a story. You want to take your audience on a journey. You want to keep it short, keep it sweet, three minutes or less, you know, music in the background is really um, important. You can go to Audio Jungle, there's some free resources also on YouTube as well that are royalty free. Um, if you happen to know a superstar singer and this might give you license to, um, to use music, by all means do that, but please don't steal anyone's music. Um, music has value. Um, you know, in your video you also want to mention what I call a small why um, and a big why. So what's a small why? small why is kind of what that product would do for the individual. So, you know, for example, if I am an entrepreneur and say I'm a green entrepreneur and I do an app, for example, that can and tell farmers, you know, how much rainfall is happening um, on a particular week so they can go, kind of plan the irrigation, you know, that's my idea, that's, my, that's the app I want to build. So that would help the farmers, you know, and help them to kind of, um, you know, be able to kind of manage their, 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 their farm better, but the big thing is that I'm actually contrib uh, contributing to um, the welfare of a whole social economic group. So you have a small why as well as a big why, you know, um, and it's really, really good that you can show um, your audience that you're not, you're looking at both the big picture as well as the small picture. If your product has the ability to be demonstrated um, via the video, that's also a great way to kind of build trust very early with your people, your crowd, that they can see what you're doing and see it demonstrated via the video. If you can do that, that's, that's awesome because it'll give them ideas of how they can use it and they'll feel, you know, um, kind of more open to using it and investing in it if they can see how it can how it can work in their in their life. Um, I'd also say it's good to also show your face in the video. And you, and you face other people working with you in your campaign. So it's not a TV ad where you're just showing the product and, you know, and that's it. You want to um, let people see you. People are investing in you. People are giving to you. People are supporting you and your team. So show people um, exactly um, what or who you, who you are and, and who you're working with and what you're doing what you're doing. Um, so that's a great thing to kind of consider when you're doing your video and when you're actually writing, you know, um, your script for your video, a few things to bear in mind. So you want, you want to act as though you're talking to one person in the video. So yes, you're talking to, you know, 500, a million, you know, whatever, but you want to kind of write your script as you're talking to one person, that target audience, whom are you talking to? You know, I keep it personal, you know, use pronouns like me and you and us and Sally so people can identify with what you're, you're saying, you know. Um, and again, focus on the, not your product because no one cares about your business in that sense. They care about how your business can help them. 
what's a problem you can solve for them, what's a touch you can give them. That's where you want to focus the most of your video time on. And um, a very powerful tool in your video to use is what you call transition and contrast. Show problem and solution. We've all seen it, you know. You may be watching a, a home a home show video where you, should, you see a, a lady in black and the TV is black and white. She's in the kitchen, and she says something like, "Have you ever tried to cook macaroni?" You know, and she and she holds up the pot, and this and the macaroni spills on the ground, and her face looks grumpy. Oh no, it's spilling on the ground. You know that kind of stuff. And then you know you, you, the screen turns color. She's in the kitchen. She's wearing high heel shoes. She has lipstick now. Here is done in the kitchen, mind you. I said, but now you can turn the macaroni easily by using the blah blah blah, and show you the problem and the solution. So mind you, it's a bit exaggerated, but it gets a point across. It's worked for generations, and it worked for you. So really try to show in your video, you know, how you're solving a problem and how your particular business idea solves solution. That's really important to show in your crowdfunding um, video. And um, in storytelling, you also want to continue looking at, you know, also want to kind of sum up what you said in the video in text and words, because you know some people are visual and some people are readers. You know, I'm the kind of visual guy, so I normally would see a video, click it, and not I'll, I'll scroll through text. Some people actually let like you sit down and read word for word. So you need to be able to communicate um, your idea for your campaign both visually as well as um, in text to cater to both kinds of people that will be viewing your crowdfunding. Uh, campaign. So a few things to kind of bear in mind, you know, as you're looking at um, building your text for your for your campaign. One, you want to kind of mention why your venture was started, um, the project, give people a history, a background of you yourself while you're doing this. You know, of course, mention what the product is. <laughs> you know, you've got to got to do that. You also want to mention like key benefits. Um, like I said, that your your reader, or in this case your talk audience, will have by using your product or service. You want to kind of state what the need is, the problem is, and how your product will solve it. Because if people can't see how your product or service can solve a problem, they're not going to invest in it via um, crowdfunding for you. They just won't. People give money as exchange for value. So you want the value of their money, you must show the value of what you can do for them. It's a simple exchange of value for value. You also want to show, for example, um, how your funding will be used. So if you're asking for $5,000, just don't say, I need $5,000. Say, well, I want, to, I want to put like two towards marketing, three towards, you don't have to give a, a full breakdown, but give people the, the, the peace of mind that you understand how this money is being used. I know you're asking for money all the air. You, you give some thought you know, to, the, to the budget, and you understand what the money will be used for. That's really important because um, you need to build trust online very quickly if people will be um, giving to a campaign. Trust is really important. So let's kind of move, dive down um, from the storytelling now to the whole issue of the reward system. Now I would say probably after the whole issue of your video, rewards are probably the biggest incentive for people to give to your um, campaign. And a good way of starting is to look at other campaigns that are similar to yours um, on other portals, other um, crowdfunding um, portals, and see what were some of the ideas, what were some of the um, perks that were given to um, those uh, persons that are similar to your campaign, and that will give you a, a, a jump start into, okay, cool, I know that my target audience seems to like and respond well to these types of, of gifts, and of course then you contextualize it and um, for the Caribbean context, but that gives you a starting point to kind of have some ideas of what you can use as gifts and perks and rewards. Um, Crowdster, um, that's K-R-O-W-D-S-T-R-E-R, um, E-R, .co is a really good resource to kind of start researching um, past crowdfunding campaigns to give you an idea of you know, how they did, what worked, what worked well, what didn't work well, because you can appreciate, you know, it's re it makes sense if you're going to do something new, to start with some history of best practice, what worked well, what didn't work well, and then kind of build on from there within the Caribbean context. And that's how I always kind of share with entrepreneurs how they should go about building their crowdfunding um, portals. Sorry, the company campaigns, my apologies. So, a few things to kind of consider when you're doing your rewards. You want to build 
different levels of rewards. You don't want to just have one level for $1,000. I mean, we all would love everybody to say, oh my gosh, this idea is so fantastic. Let me give $1,000 to this campaign. I would love that. But the reality is, everyone in the Caribbean, you know, doesn't have a thousand dollars to give to a campaign. But some, but when you have a hundred, that can give fifty. You have a thousand, that can give twenty-five, and those numbers add up. So you want to have love um, numbers on the lower end, and of course, the higher end to kind of cater to a range of people who would give to the campaign. You want to have like a base pledge of around like fifteen or twenty-five bucks, because people, um, you will find a lot of people will give very quickly. At that level, it's affordable. It's probably less than a snack box, you know, from from a fast food joint. So, you know, people don't really think a lot about it, but it's a great way to also spin the wheel quick in terms of momentum into your campaign. By having a, a lower level base pledge, but still give something of value for that level that people could appreciate. You know, it could be a sticker, it could be a poster. You know, depending on who your crowd is and what your campaign is about, you would know what best would kind of suit your target your target audience. Um, depending on the cost of your perks and how much money you want to raise, you know it's good to have a lot of reward between 20, um, 25 and 100. But like I said, if your rewards are more on the expensive side, you know you can definitely stretch that out and have rewards at the $500 level or even the $1,000 level, based, um, based on what your reward is. Um, you know, and offer people a good deal. People always like to get a deal. So if people are giving, you know, twenty-five, fifty, hundred dollars to your campaign, um, make, make sure the reward is something that's worthwhile. It doesn't have to be over expensive, but it has, it has to be thoughtful and some of you think for sure that your target audience would appreciate. So if you're into, for example, we just had a campaign, an Austin campaign that was run by a guy called Mark Gibson. He is a graphic, a graphic artist, and you know he did an awesome graphic um, novel called Bridgeland. Um, just check it out. You know, it's a free app for him. He, he doesn't know that, but um, you know, and he gave, um, for example, audio readings of the book, for example, and he t-shirts with the characters on it, and you know, so um, um. He gave stuff that was tied around the characters and the story of the book because you know people who are into graphic novels would like that stuff. So again, it really calls for giving some thought into who your target audience is and building rewards around that that you know that they would appreciate. So I mean, like I said, it could be T-shirts, it could be CDs, DVDs, it could be other parts of the product. For example, another client, you know, they do um, pepper sauce, so they actually gave the pepper. They actually look at, looking at giving the pepper sauce as the reward itself. So if you give 50 bucks, you get two flavors of pepper sauce. If you give, um, you know, 500, you get three levels of pepper sauce. So you know, you can use the very product itself that you're selling as part of the reward, and that's a, a powerful way of getting your product sold quickly, getting it tested, and even exporting it to, to a different country by using crowdfunding as a means to do that. Um, you can look at your awards in two ways. It can either be um, tangible or intangible. And of course, intangibles cost less. Um, you've got to be more creative with them, but they cost less. So it's a great way to keep a lot of profit margin um, when you're building your crowdfunding campaign. But you can use a mixture of tangible and intangible rewards to really motivate your crowd um, to give. Um, when you're setting your campaign goals, you don't want to do it too high. <laughs> of course, too low. Um, some things you want to consider when you're doing your, your, your funding goals. One, you want to make sure that all the costs are already um, calculated in terms of the cost of the rewards as well as the cost of you need to seed capital, that idea or that business. So your, your funding goals should bear in mind those two variables. Um, you want to budget for a little more than you need because Murphy Law always comes up, but again, um, don't don't do your wish list. So if you can get your project well done for ten thousand, don't say you're trying to get twenty thousand. You know, um, shoot for the ten thousand. And of course, if you make it over that, fantastic. But if you get your ten thousand, at least you know that you have what you need to cover your costs and get your project off of the ground. And yes, uh, I'm pretty sure it's come up at some point in time. You yes, you can raise more than you set up to raise, and you can keep that extra bit that you would have raised. So if you were trying to raise 5,000 and you raise 10,000, of course you can keep um, the extra um, money that you raise, um, less whatever fees and commissions you would um, pay on the end of using the platform itself. Yeah, So really important tool to bear in mind um, when doing this. So we're going to dive right into the social network part of your, your crowdfunding campaign because 
you could appreciate the first word before funding is crowd, right? So we all want the funding um, for sure, but we need to build a crowd so that we can get crowd funding. And you know, ideally, not always, but ideally, it's going to have at least three months of of prep time. Um, of talking to people and doing some pre some, some marketing, some emails uh, to, to your crowd before you launch a campaign. So when you actually launch a campaign, people are already aware of what you're doing. People are excited because you've been sharing your ideas with them. You've been sharing little snippets of your video with them. You've been prepping them um, for the time when you actually go live and launch it. So what are the components of a crowd in crowdfunding? So I would say that there are four main components that make up your crowd, right? So there's your family and your friends, um, the target audience that you're looking to kind of sell your product or service to. Um, there are influencers and there are media um, bloggers and PR people who would actually um, be helping you spread the message of your campaign. So let's kind of look at the first group of your crowd, your friends, your family, your colleagues. Now you need your friends and family to be backing you up 110 I would say that ideally you want to have that group kind of contributing. I mean, it doesn't have to be three, as high as, but if you can, that's fantastic. At least 30% of your funding goal. Um, and get them early on. So you want them to fund your campaign on day one. So you have a launch that's private for your friend and family, and then you have one that's public. Now, why would you do that? Simple. If you have your friends and family donate to your campaign on day one, um, and then that's there, so people can see, um, you know, you have X amount of dollars there, you have X amount of rainmakers. When you take it to the public, people see that on day one you already have activity, and they're saying, my gosh, this campaign is on fire. Day one, he's already, he's already raised X amount of dollars. People are already into this, and it creates some buzz. If on day one you have zero, day two have zero, people begin to think, well, eh, maybe it's not that hot, maybe it's not that cool, and you know, you don't develop that whole thing called social proof. The internet is based on social proof. People follow people. So people follow people. So if people are seeing, you know, they have five stars here, they say it must be a good book. They've not read it, but five stars mean it must be good. The same principle works with crowdfunding. If people see that you are getting on day one, on day two activity, they're thinking, okay, this campaign is something that is worth um, investing into. So you want to um, begin that process by doing a few things. One. You want to develop a list, email list first. So you want to extract um, emails probably from Gmail, from LinkedIn maybe, and you want to send just one email saying that you're going to do a campaign. Just one. Anything else, um, one of that can be bordered on spamming. After that, you want to create what we call a landing page. That is like a one-page website that says, that talks about your campaign and everything, and it captures email addresses. So that group that you send an email to, you're going to send them to your landing page so that they can opt in to getting further communication from you. And the group of emails you have that you gathered from your landing page, those are the ones you continue to talk to and nurture from being just listeners to actually to actual funders. Spamming anyone, and the way you avoid spamming is by sending one email to the group, direct that email, send them to your landing page, let them opt in, give them some incentive on your landing page for giving their emails, and once you have the emails, then you put them into like a MailChimp or a Converse list, and then you send them you know, emails periodically before your campaign starts so they know what's happening and that they can be excited and primed. So when you ask for funding now, they're not like, where's this coming from? They, they know you've been talking to them for the last couple of weeks or months about your coming campaign. Make sense? Fantastic. So we're looking at you know, reaching out to these groups of so friends and family, acquaintances. Now, influencers are those people online that, well, let me kind of break that into two halves because you have two kinds of influencers. So one, you have kind of personal influencers, people in your network that you know that have a lot of sway on Facebook and Twitter, that have a lot of followers, a lot, a, lot, a lot of likes. You want to get them to kind of back up what you're doing, share uh, with their community, your, your campaign. Use their social media muscle to drive your campaign. That's one. Then there are influencers that you have you don't know personally, like the Richard Bransons of this world, or the, you know. So, but those guys also are very influential as well, and you can reach them to them too. I mean, again, um, we had a campaign with Mark Gibson. He was able to get Jerome Dickey. Um, many of you know him. He's a, a world famous author to kind of give a kudos to the campaign and promote his campaign among 
uh, Jordan Dickey's followers. So you can get endorsements of people who have um, um, what we call social media capital. And you will ask me, Adrian, how do I find them? Simple. There's a website called Buzz Sumo. Awesome, awesome tool. What do you do? You can then, depending on the area, you want to find your students in, if it's um, graphic novel, if it's apps, if it's um, green technology, whatever, you can go to Basumo, you can look, you can click the link influencers, type in that such area and it bring up all the people on Twitter and Facebook that have you know hundreds to thousands to millions of followers and you can use those to kind of find influencers um, to, to reach out to, I would say probably find about 10 and um, you know reach out to them and don't know what you're doing but when you talk to influencer, make sure you mention your big why and not your small why. In other words, how does your campaign change the world? Even if it's the world of a small group, but how so people will tie into your big, your big, your big vision and be more likely to promote you. If you just about support my campaign and want some money or want some bills, eh, not gonna work. People don't aren't gonna be into that. So you want to make sure you can have a clear articulate what your big vision is and then reach it to your influencers that way. And lastly, last group you, you want to reach out to is your media, your bloggers, your journalists. And you want to, you know, you have, of course, your local media, um, your local bloggers. You want to reach, to reach out to them, to ask them to, to cover, you know, your your campaign and what you're doing. I'll give you a, a really um, easy hack um, to find bloggers that are good. So what you want to do is go to a campaign on, go to a campaign that was run before that is similar to yours, all right? So you have other um, portals, like you have your Kickstarters, your Indiegogo's, et cetera, your GoFundMe's, you know, Rock Hubs, et cetera. So you go to a campaign that, like yours, and you wanna copy and paste all of the pictures from that campaign. Sorry, copy them, um, copy all the pictures from the campaign. You wanna go to Google Images, not the word, Google Images, and paste those pictures inside the search box of Google Images. And what it will do, it will bring up all the bloggers that would have covered um, that particular campaign on their particular blog. <coughs> Sorry. And you know, if they cover that particular blog, um, that particular campaign, they will also cover yours as, as well too because it's within the same genre um, of topic that they covered before. So it's a good way of finding relevant bloggers to cover your campaign. And um, lastly, you know, after the campaign, what you want to do? First off, you want to celebrate because that's a lot of work you did. Um, you know, crack the champagne, celebrate your success. You know, you want to acknowledge and let people know you reached your goal. Um, again, so you want to celebrate. You're going to send out a million and one thank yous and shout outs to everyone who helped you make your goal. You want to keep your funders updated. So if you you know, so your campaign has come to an end and now you've got, you've got to use the money to do the thing. Keep them updated every month or so. Let them know what's happening. Give them milestones so they feel a part of the journey. Um, let them feel a part of your community because they actually are that now. They're not just strangers. They're not a crowd anymore. They're actually your community. They should be keeping up to date and abreast of what you've did or what you want to do. And um, you know, use multimedia. You know, so do quick um, um, phone videos of what you're doing and and how your project is coming. Now, when it comes to the, the rewards, now, if there are any hiccups or delays, be up front, be honest, let them know, well, you know what, guys, um, you know, we have a delay with the FedEx or UPS or, you know, the local mailing um, on post office or whatever, but be honest, be up front, um, nip it in the bud, and let them know you work on it, and people respect when you're open up front about those kind of things, you know, and then just follow through and give, give people the rewards. And um, yeah, again, and celebrate the success. So these are just um, you know some things that pulled out out of like I said, we, we do a two-day workshop, you know, on this. And um, these are I guess the main points I want to pull out for our session today. Um, so again, a little some other tips to bear in mind. Keep your campaign between like 30 and 45 days in length. Um, you can even consider using your crowdfunding um, as a down payment for a bigger loan. So let's say you need to get 100k um, for your business, for your startup, for your idea, for your NGO, you can probably say, oh, I'm going to crowdfund 10,000 of that and use the crowdfunding money as a payment for loan. Um, try to launch a campaign on a Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, on Mondays, people are very introverted. They're looking at their, their plans for the week. They're not really taking in emails from anybody else, especially if anything asks for anything, so you'll be ignored. 
Tuesday, people have got an idea of what the week is like, so they'll be more likely to hear what you're saying. Wednesday, same thing. Avoid Fridays. People will ignore you on Fridays. Saturday and Sundays, well, we know when that is ready. You know, so you want to kind of use Tuesday or Wednesday as your launch day to get the best possible um, result. Again, you want to go on, you know, make um, on other campaigns. Um, the Defender, you want to make comments and saying what people are doing because um, it's about reciprocity. So if you contribute to another person's campaign or say something nice, most likely, you know, they'll do the same um, for you. So it's about crowds, about reciprocity. It's about building momentum um, with your with your crowd. And this is just a, a snapshot of what um, Vision Funder looks like. You can find us there at visionfunder.com. And again, if you use us to to um, build your crowdfunding campaigns for the creative industries, for social causes, for small business, as well as for science and technology. Um, so with that. Um, I think we've come to the end. Now we'll I'll open up for some Q&A. And um, any question you have, um, feel free to ask. And if it's too hard, I'll ask for them to jump in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Adrian. That, that was great. Um, as you said, we now have a little bit of space to do a Q&A. I know you have a, a short available time, so we'll try to do it briefly. Uh, to the participants, I would ask them to go ahead and write down your questions on um, on the uh, on the questions tab. You'll find on the panel you you have that you have a tab specifically for questions, and uh, well, you can type your question right there, and uh, I'll read it out loud uh, so that uh, Mr. Reed can go ahead and uh, and answer your questions. So. That taking that into consideration, I'll start off the questions and I'll read them as they come in. The first question, uh, Adrian, is: uh, Does it matter if my business idea is at an early stage? Do I need a str uh, strategy if I'm at an early stage? Um, so, if your business is at an early stage, um, you definitely can still use crowdfunding to gain um, some money for that. I would say for sure it is harder um, because you know. It will be looked at and there's no track record as yet. But if you are able to sell the idea, one, two, be able to communicate very clearly the value that what you're doing will offer um, to the customer you're trying to um, sell this to, the chances are very possible. I mean, if we take, for example, Uber. Uber is now a multi-billion dollar company, and they got their first sort of investment by not having any track record. They simply were able to communicate very clearly and simply um, what they want to do the beauty in it, the simplicity of it, and the value of it, and we'll say the rest is history. So in your case, the same principles um, would uh, apply. So if you're early stage, that's fantastic, but be able to very clearly articulate the value that you're offering to the crowd, and then the crowd will respond to the value by investing into that business, at least to bring a prototype to the market. Great, thank you so much for that. Um, also, I would like to invite people who have a working microphone. Uh, you can, there's a little button with a raised hand. You can click that raised hand button, and I can unmute your microphone so that you can also uh, join in on the questions um, uh, through the microphone, not text, but with your voice. So, let me go ahead and, and pass on to the next qu next question. Uh, which is, uh, should I include the cost of the reward system in my target funding? Yes, you should. Um, you definitely want to include um, those costs. Your 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 formula, so to speak, for your campaign costs are what you need to actually successfully run the campaign and what you need to fulfill the rewards that you're offering or promising the people who are giving to the campaign. So yes, you definitely want to um, include those. So of course, that being the case, you need to be very creative and selective in what you choose to be um, rewarded so that um, when you actually receive your money for running a successful campaign, that you have enough to fulfill those rewards as well as um, successfully um, run your idea or use the C capital to launch your business or idea. Great. Uh, moving on to the next question, uh, we have Jimmy Jones. He's asking, uh, does Vision Funder have crowdfunding coaches that can help you develop the campaign? Um, yes, we do. So we do have um, coaches that um, were personally trained, and they can yes walk you through um, the process. Um, what we 
that happens in two ways. So one, if you are already relatively um, savvy online, you, it could be a coaching where we just tell you what to do, give you a step each week, and you do that. Or if it's a matter of time constraints, we actually have a person that can run the campaign with you, and not for you, with you, and execute on, on your behalf with you. And um, you know, so it could be a bit more hands-on there. So it really depends on what level of support you need, but we do supply um, both. Great, that's a that's a really important information that, that people uh, wanted to hear. Uh, so we're almost at the end of the session. I would encourage anyone who still has a question to go ahead and type type it down or uh, raise your hand with the raised hand button and I can unmute your mic. Um, I would like to read one of the questions. It says, uh, if my campaign fails to reach its target, what assessment should I do before I try again? Sure, so if you fail to reach a target, there are a, a, a couple of areas you want to look at. So the first area is um, in terms of did you do uh, any pre-marketing before your, your campaign? So did you just kind of launch the campaign and kind of hope people, you know, um, just kind of jumped on or did you actually have um, persons lined up that you, you were speaking to via MailChimp, etc., over a period of time? The other thing you want to ask yourself is did people actually like the idea? Were you able to capture the value of what you're doing? Did people understand the value of what you're doing. That could be a simple um, um, survey you can do very, very um, freely or cheap, actually on like um, a survey, monkey for example. Ask people, did they like the idea? Did they like the um, concept? Um, what were they, um, were they confused by any of the things they said? So, you know, you want to iron out those, those areas of confusion or ambiguity um, very, very early on. The other thing you might want to look at is, were you asking for too much money? You know, so we're both thinking, well, she wants to do an app. But she asked me for a hundred thousand dollars. That this doesn't add up. So you know those things have to be congruent. You know they, they gotta make sense. So those are some of the things I would kind of uh, measure off the bat um, that are needed to kind of look at when you would have um, been unsuccessful in the campaign. Great, great. Okay, so. Um... We were, we're gonna finish that right there. I uh, just wanted to remind everyone that we will we did record the session and um, we'll be uploading the session to the bootcamp platform. Uh, you're gonna be able to look at this video and many other videos, many other webinars on the platform. You have I put the website right here. It's www.ybt.net forward slash bootcamp. Uh, when you get in, in that website, you will be able to check out all the different um, webinars we've done with different um, with different topics. Uh, this is from business projects, uh, formulation, business plans. And uh, just before we go, I want to show you the last slide, which has Adrian's um, contact information. So if, uh, if you would need to contact him, his information is on the screen right now. Uh, hopefully you can are able to look at it. Let me just get stuff out of the way so that you can see it clearly. And uh, you can also uh, follow Vision, Fu Vision Funder on Facebook. Uh, just look for it as that, Vision Funder, and you will be able to find their Facebook page as well. And of course you can go directly to the Vision Funder Funder website. So thank you very much, Adrian. This has been an excellent session. Um, My pleasure. Pretty I'm pretty sure uh, we would love to have you again in a different edition of uh, of the boot camp sessions. Um, everyone, thank you once again for joining us. And uh, remember that uh, you have until January 15 to uh, register your project on the TIC Americas, the TIC Americas competition. And also for more information on the Caribbean Innovation Competition, the Caribbean uh, competition itself, you can go to uh, reachcompetition.com, .net, sorry. Uh, let me just go ahead. If you're looking at my screen, I'm going to go ahead and go into the website. It's reachcompetition.net. Um, and you will find all the information you need. And you can also uh, register your project and uh, upload all your deliverables so you can join us on this incredible opportunity 
to uh, expand your businesses in many ways. So thank you very much. Uh, once again, Mr. Agent Reed from Vision Funder and Legacy Global, thank you so much for being with us. And um, My pleasure. Everyone else, Thanks for having me. And thank you, everyone else, for joining us. Goodbye.